Good day, acute angels. Welcome to a new learning episode. This is Teacher Eliza, your grade 8 mathematics teacher. Before we start, kindly prepare the following. Your Math 8 self-learning module, your pen and paper for note-taking or for writing your answers as we go through this discussion. And most importantly, find a place in your home where you feel most comfortable to study and learn. We are now on our week 2 lesson wherein you will apply theorems on triangle inequalities. But first, let us review what you have learned on your previous lesson about these theorems. You may write your answers on a piece of paper or type them on the comment section below. Let us start! Question number 1. What theorem states that the sum of the lengths of any two sides of a triangle is greater than the length of the third side? Is it A. The exterior angle inequality theorem B. Triangle inequality theorem C. Hinge theorem or D. The converse of the hinge theorem That is correct! The answer is Letter B, the Triangle Inequality Theorem. Next question, which of the following lengths can be measures of the sides of a triangle? Is it letter A, 12, 5, and 7? B, 4, 8, and 15? C, 9, 13, and 2? Or D, 8, 5, and 11? You are right! The correct answer is letter D, 8, 5, and 11. Let's have question number 3. Given the figure on the right, what are the two exterior angles at vertex C? Is it A, angle 4 and angle 5? B, angle 4 and angle 6? C, angle 5 and angle 6? Or D, Angle 3 and Angle 6 Very good! Letter C is the correct answer. Angle 5 and Angle 6 Moving on to question number 4. Given the figure on the right, what are the two remote angles of Angle 4? Is it A. Angle 1 and Angle 2 B. Angle 2 and Angle 3 C. Angle 3 and Angle 5 Or D. Angle 4, 5 and Angle 2 You are correct! The answer is letter A. Angle 1 and Angle 2 And for the last question, using the hinge theorem, which of the following sides is longer? Is it A. Side AC or B, side DC. That is right! Letter B is the correct answer. Great job, grade 8 learners! I guess you are now ready to have our new lesson. Let us start with Triangle Inequality Theorem 1 and Theorem 2. The Triangle Inequality Theorem 1 states that if one side of a triangle is longer than the second side, then the angle opposite the first side is larger than the angle opposite the second side. In the figure below, we have triangle ABC where side BC is longer than the side AB. By applying this theorem, we can conclude that the angle opposite the side BC is larger than the angle opposite the side AB. That is, angle A is larger than angle C. Next, we have the Triangle Inequality Theorem 2 which states that if one angle of a triangle is larger than the second angle, then the side opposite the first angle is longer than the side opposite the second angle. In the given triangle, angle B is larger than angle C. By applying this theorem, we can say that the side opposite the angle B is longer than the side opposite the angle C. That is, Side AC is longer than side AB.
interface from the two theorems, we can conclude the following relationships between the longest side and the largest angle, and the shortest side and the smallest angle of a triangle, and vice versa. That is, if one side of a triangle is the longest, then the angle opposite it is the largest. Also, if one side of a triangle is the shortest, then the angle opposite it is the smallest, or vice versa. If one angle of a triangle is the largest, then the side opposite it is the longest. Moreover, if one angle of a triangle is the smallest, then the side opposite it is the shortest. Let us have our first example using the triangle inequality theorem 1. Name the smallest angle and the largest angle of the following triangles. Our first triangle PET has the side lengths 11 for side ET, 12 for side BE, and 13 for side BT. Will you identify its smallest angle? That is correct! Angle P is the smallest angle since it is the angle opposite the shortest side ED. How about its largest angle? Very good! The largest angle is angle E since it is opposite the longest side PP. Now let us have triangle AIM. It has the following side lengths AM which is 3.5, MI is 4.5, and AI is 5.5. What is its smallest angle? That is right! Angle I is the smallest angle since it is the angle opposite the shortest side AM. How about its largest angle? Very good! The largest angle is angle M since it is opposite the longest side AI. Let's have example number 2. For this one, the triangle inequality theorem 2 will be applied. In triangle FRY, angle F measures 46 degrees, angle R measures 105 degrees, and angle Y measures 29 degrees. Will you name its shortest side? Correct! Its shortest side is side FR, since it is the side opposite the smallest angle Y. What about its longest side? That is right! FY is the longest side since it is the side opposite the largest angle R. Next triangle we have triangle SON where angle S measures 55 degrees, angle O measures 61 degrees, and angle N measures 64 degrees. Will you identify its shortest side? That is correct! ON is its shortest side since it is the side opposite the smallest angle S. How about the longest side? Very good! The longest side is side SO since it is the side opposite the largest angle N. And we are done with triangle inequality theorem 1 and theorem 2. Let us now have triangle inequality theorem 3 and apply it with example number 3. Two sides of a triangle have the measures 6 and 7. Find the range of the possible measures of the third side. Since we are talking about range here, we will look for the minimum and maximum values of the possible measures of the third side. Let us start solving this problem. Let x be the third side of the triangle. If we add the two given measures 6 and 7, their sum is 13. By applying the triangle inequality theorem 3, which states that the sum of the lengths of any two sides of a triangle is greater than the third side, thus, 13 must be greater than x, which is the third side of this triangle, or x is less than 13. In other words, x cannot be greater than 12. And this gives us the maximum value of x. Let us now look for its minimum value. Having this theorem, we can also form these other two inequalities, which are x plus 6 is greater than 7 and x plus 7 is greater than 6. 
To satisfy both of these inequalities, x must be greater than 1. For instance, x is equal to 2. If we substitute x with 2, the first inequality will become 8 is greater than 7, which is true, and the second inequality will become 9 is greater than 6, which is also true. Take note that any value of x that is greater than 1 will satisfy both of these inequalities. And this gives us the minimum value of x. And since we already have the minimum and maximum value of x, we can now form the range of the possible measures of the third side, and that is x is greater than 1 but less than 13. And now I will show you an easier way on how to solve this problem. We just have to get the difference and sum of the two given measures to get the minimum value and the maximum value of the third side. Of course, let x be the third side. The difference of the two given measures 7, 6 is 1, and their sum is 13. Their difference is the minimum value of x, and their sum is the maximum value of x. Hence, the range of x or the possible measures of the third side is x is greater than 1 but less than 13. Let's move on with example number 4. Find the range of possible measures of x in the following given sides of a triangle, 10, 7, and x. Let x be the third side of the triangle. By adding the two given measures 10 and 7, it will give us 17. And 17 must be greater than x, which is the third side of the triangle, or x is less than 17. In other words, x is any number lower than 17. And this gives us the maximum value that x can be. The other two inequalities that we can form are x plus 10 is greater than 7 and x plus 7 is greater than 10. To satisfy both of these inequalities, x must be greater than 3. And this is now the minimum value that x can be. By having the minimum value and maximum value of x, we can form the range of the possible measures of the third side which is x is greater than 3 but less than 17. And just like what we have done in the previous example, we can solve this problem in an easier way by having the difference and sum of the two given measures. The difference of 10 and 7 is 3 and the sum is 17. The difference is the minimum value of x and the sum is the maximum value of x. Thus, we can form the range which is x is greater than 3 but less than 17. For our next example, we have, if the three sides of a triangle are given by x plus 2, 2x plus 7, and 4x plus 1, what is the greatest possible value of x? In this example, we are given three expressions for the three sides of a triangle. We will use these to form three inequalities. Our first inequality is x plus 2 plus 2x plus 7 is greater than 4x plus 1. Combining like terms, this inequality will become 3x plus 9 is greater than 4x plus 1. Now, subtracting 9 and 4x on both sides of the equations of the inequality, this will become 3x minus 4x is greater than 1 minus 9. 3x minus 4x is negative x and 1 minus 9 is negative 8. And then divide both sides with negative 1 this becomes x is less than 8. Notice that the inequality symbol was changed with the less than symbol. It's because there is a rule that whenever you multiply or divide both sides of an inequality by a negative number, the inequality sign must be flipped or reversed. For example, if you use the greater than inequality symbol, it will, will be changed to the less than inequality symbol and vice versa. In our example, negative x is greater than negative 8 was changed to x is less than 8. And there we have our first range of possible values of x. For our next inequality, we have x plus 2 
plus 4x plus 1 is greater than 2x plus 7. Combining like terms, this becomes 5x plus 3 is greater than 2x plus 7. Subtracting 3 and 2x on, from both sides of the inequality, this becomes 5x minus 2x is greater than 7 minus 3. 5x minus 2x is equal to 3x and 7 minus 3 is 4. Dividing both sides with 3, this becomes x is greater than 4 thirds. And there we have our second range of possible values of x. And for our third inequality, we have 2x plus 7 plus 4x plus 1 is greater than x plus 2. And combining like terms, this becomes 6x plus 8 is greater than x plus 2. Now, subtracting 8 and x on both sides of the inequality, it becomes 6x minus x is greater than 2 minus 8. 6x minus x is 5x and 2 minus 8 is negative 6. Dividing both sides of the inequality with 5, this becomes x is greater than negative 6 fifths. By having these three inequalities, x is less than 8, x is greater than 4 thirds, and x is greater than negative 6 fifths, we can form the range of possible values of x, which is x is greater than 4 thirds but less than 8. This answers the question to this problem, that is, the greatest possible integer value of x is 7. And we are down with our last theorem, which is the hinge theorem. This states that if two sides of one triangle are congruent to two sides of another triangle, and the included angle of one triangle is larger than the included angle of the other triangle, then the third side of one triangle is longer than the third side of the other triangle. Let us apply this to example number 6. Given the figures below, Find the possible values of x. As you can see on the two given triangles, side HE is congruent to side NU. Side EY is congruent to side UF. Also, the measure of angle HEY from the first triangle is greater than the measure of, side of angle FUN from the second triangle. Therefore, by using the hinge theorem, we can conclude that the third side, HY of the first triangle, is also greater than the third side, FN, of the second triangle. Side HY is given by 2X minus 1, and side FN is given by X plus 4. Now, adding 1 and subtracting X on both sides of the equation or inequality, we have 2x minus x is greater than 4 plus 1. 2x minus x is x and 4 plus 1 is 5. Thus, x is greater than 5. Therefore, the possible values of x are greater than 5. And that ends our lesson. It is now your turn to practice and apply what you have learned from this lesson by answering the given activity. Number 1. Two sides of a triangle have the measures 7 and 11. Find the range of possible measures of the third side. Number 2. Name the smallest angle and the largest angle of the following triangles. Triangle END and Triangle RYT. Number 3. Name the shortest side and the longest side of the following triangles. Triangle QTU and Triangle LYF. And number 4. Given the figure below, solve for the possible values of x. We have triangle OPQ and triangle RST. And that's all for today. Thank you for your time and effort. I hope you have learned a lot from this lesson. Again, this is teacher Eliza Mekunanan, your grade 8 mathematics teacher. Have a good day and God bless.